Hello everyone, welcome to our fifth video in the series. Today we're going to be focusing on date analysis. Um, humans are pretty decent at, you know, seeing linear relationships, um, understanding linear math, but when it comes to calendar math, um, everything kind of gets thrown out the window. It's a little trickier to, to manage with dates, um, especially every year is a little bit different. Um, so similar to the last video, I'll just show you the different elements of a date and how we can kind of use them to, to our advantage. So we have a date here, just some standard format. Um, you know, in Europe, they typically do um, day, month, year, which is a understandable hierarchy. Um, here in America, however, we typically just do month, day, year. That can easily be changed, and I'll show you that in the video. So if we want to get the date par the day parameter from this, we, ha we say day, and as you can see, it looks like it wants to get fed in serial number. That's how Excel sees dates. We see them as this. Um, that's just formatted. So we want to get the day part of that, the 14th. That makes sense. Let's get the month component and the year. And like, like before, when you hit your, your um, function you want to use, hit tab. And now I'm using the arrows to go over to select the cell instead of using mouse. Um, saves energy in my arms. <laughs> All right, so now we have each component of the date. Can we form that back together? You bet. So you give it the year, comma, the month, and the day. And now we have reconstructed our date based off the elements we stripped from the date originally. All right, um, so there's other, other pieces of information um, you can take from your dates. Um, I will start off with a, a very cool one in the beginning. For example, 11-29-2011. What day of the week was that? Was that a Monday, Friday? Um, and this, this function text is very cool. So you convert the value um, to a specific number format. So we select this, the value we want to convert, and we tell what format we want it in. So right now, DD, D stands for day, so you know you're going to be working with the day component. Um, D is that D it D excuse me D is the minimum you can use and that will be 22 D D will also be 22 <laughs> however if you want to start getting into the day try using three D's now that's abbreviated or um, truncated day of the week and now you can do the full spelling so essentially you're converting this serial number into a text that equals the same thing um, just a different form of it Monday um, so now we'll bring this down. And now we know that it was a Tuesday. Weekday is a very important fu um, function. So this, it treats the week like an index, one through seven. Um, and we can return whatever whatever day of the week this was. So very similar to day of week, but it keeps it more numerical. Um, you can you can initialize your your day of the week to be the first day anything um, We are we're gonna use the, the number one for Monday So we're gonna say Monday is our first day of the week. So we'll use the second option in this right here So Monday's number one that works out perfectly Now what about week number? That's very similar um, what this does is just like from 1 to 7 for days, it's 1 to 52 for weeks. So you feed it the week You say did, did this date fall in the 42nd week of the year? Uh, what did it fall in? This could be important for budgeting um, for analysis f multiple reasons And we're gonna say the week begins on a Monday just like the the last example. So two Now that's the last week of the year Lastly, and I showed you this in the first example, um, we can get month number, and that's important. The reason why that is important um, is due to quarters, um, and I'm actually going to do a live example right now, um, so I'm going to fill this out really quick because that almost made no sense. Um, so serial number, and now we get the month number, January being 1, December being 12. Why is this important? I'll show you right now. So I apologize, this screen's more zoomed out than any of the others. Um, now we're starting to work with a little bit more data. Um, so essentially this is sales data. So every day you have you have sales. Um, and we want to say, how much did we sell in Q1 versus Q2 versus Q3? 
Now, to start this off, we need to group our dates into Q1, Q3, etc. It goes all the way down to December. So essentially what we do is we'll get month. And we'll pick the serial, we'll pick the date. Um, like I said, Excel sees it as a serial number. Do not let that intimidate you. Um, the dates will work fine. Sadly, this is a this is a number or dollar format. So what we're going to do is we select the top cell, hold Shift and Control, and then your down arrow. Control lets you go up and down with your um, with your arrow to the very last entry of the row, and then Shift selects the data. So I selected all the data in that table. We're going to change this into a regular number. And now we can use these. So like I've taught you guys before, we don't want these to be formulas anymore. We want these just to be values. So I'm going to select the whole column. While I hold right click, drag, and bring back, and copy as values only. Now they're just values. So how can we use month to get quarter? Do you guys remember VLOOKUP? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this here. I'm going to insert a column right here for a little bit of room. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to remove all duplicates. Now we know we only have 1 through 12 for months. So this is something we knew. We could have typed that out. That was just a lazy way to get 1 through 12. Now we can give each month a corresponding a corresponding quarter. We'll order this. Remember Format Painter? I'm in no format. I'll use Format Painter here. It's gone. All right. So now, quarter one is January, February, March. Quarter two is April, May, and June. July, August, September, October, November, December. All right. So now we have a little reference table, I will call it, from months to quarters. Now we can bring the quarter in here. So do you guys remember the VLOOKUP we used? This is a perfect case for it. So based off of the month value, right here, look in this table, and this is the only data in this whole column. Um, you know, you can select this table if you'd like, but I just know nothing else is an F and G, so no ones or twos are gonna conflict with these ones. We wanna bring in the second call, call index number. We wanna bring in quarters, and we want it to be an exact match. So we'll use false. So the first month is quarter one. The fourth month and the fifth month is quarter two. All right, that looks like it checks out. So just like before, I'm going to select the column, right click, hold, drag and drag back and copy as values only. Now they're just values. This was just a reference table. I already made these values. They're not using this. In the VLOOKUP is, is not live anymore. So we can delete this reference table because that's um, something we do not need. Now, remember in the last video we went over some if? This is a perfect case for it. So essentially we're doing some calendar math and we want to find out how many sales per quarter. Um, what our total sales for the first quarter is versus the second quarter, etc. So some if range. The sum range is different than the range. The range is what criteria we're looking at. So we're saying, hey, look at this range right here. And if something that may range matches to Q1, then sum those all together. Our sum range will be sales. Pretty simple. 55,000. That's a decent quarter, I think. We'll drag it down. Spot check. We want to make sure. We're doing, we're looking in this column for Q4, and we're summing all the numbers up in the sales column. All right, so now let's do a quick sanity check. Doing any kind of analysis, sanity checks are important um, due to the fact that if you have a bunch of steps, you don't know where you went wrong, it can get really, really tedious. All right, so about a quarter million dollars, 224,000. We're going to go to the bottom of here, control click, or control arrow down, and we're going to do sum. Sum of this. Now I'm going to do shift control all the way up and that will select my whole range now I'll do shift down to unselect that top cell and this total number of sales should be 224,000 beautiful that is what we call a sanity check we now know that the math we did um, checks out and that these quarters are accurate
Um, lastly, and this will be very quick, um, what we can do is we can get an idea for this. So we want to know how our growth is doing on a yearly basis. Um, we can insert a line graph. Pretty simple. I'm not going to go into any customization of the graph, but now we know. You know, sales start to do a little bit better towards the second half of the year. They taper off during the holiday season. Um, so maybe we're a summer type company. I made these numbers up, so I'm making these conclusions up as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a little bit of date math. Now, um, to kind of go deeper into the date math, we can find differences. So we already went over date diff, and that was that custom function that doesn't have parameters that come out with it. Um, let's go over some other functions that you'll definitely find useful. Days 360, what that does is it returns the difference between two dates based on just a regular 360 day year. Um, we know there are 365 days. Um, this gets rid of leap years because it's, what is it, 1.25 days every five years. Um, so days 360, the start date, the end date. And um, like I said, some dates go in European, some dates go in the US, um, depending on the format. We're going to just use US for now, just because that happens to be where we are. To bring this formula down, click and drag, and let's spot check. It looks like there's a two-day difference between the 15th and the 17th. That makes sense. Um, any of them look near like the, a full year? No, nope, nothing Nothing a full year. This is 100 days ahead, um, so a little over three months. That makes sense. Now, typically we work for a company, and we don't count weekdays, and we don't count holidays. How can we facilitate that if we want to find a difference in dates? That's where network days comes in handy. The number It returns the number of whole work days between two dates. It takes three parameters. The start date, the end date, naturally, and you can feed it in a holiday calendar because you do not want to count days you weren't at work. Um, you know, you're not going to get paid for those days. You shouldn't be counting them. So what you can do is you can feed it a holiday calendar. And right now, we're going to use this little table as our holiday reference calendar. We're going to close that formula. We want to make sure, however, that this is locked. This is an absolute reference. And we use the F4 key to make sure that it's locked from a column and row standpoint. We'll bring this down and we can now that we have data right next to it we can just double click on this green handle and it will smart it will be smart and bring it down all right so now what if we want custom weekends so what if we're working at a manufacturing plant um you know and our weekends are let's just say monday tuesday or some weird con or some different configuration so what we're going to do is network days international so this is very similar you pick a start date you pick an end date, and now you want to feed it a weekend. Um, it gives you an option, and what did we say? Let's just say we, we settled on Monday and Tuesday weekends. So we'll say three, because that three indicates that Monday and Tuesday will be the days excluded from the count. And now we're also going to want to feed it our holiday calendar as well. And actually, I will show you. We can we could totally feed it, but you see how they're bracketed, these parameters? You do not need them. So we're just going to pick the third weekend, Monday and Tuesday, and we do not need to feed a holiday calendar in. Because what if there weren't any holidays? The function will still calculate. As you can see, we did give me the difference of work days between here, 1, 2, and here, 4, 3. And our weekends are Mondays and Tuesdays. Now, you could, you could naturally give it the holiday parameter like we gave this table. But seeing that it's bracketed in, it's not necessary for the calculation to compute. Let's go over to our last section. We call this projecting dates. Um, you know, if you've ever worked on a project with a project manager, um, a lot of times you're going to have, you know, commit dates, um, and you're going to have a hierarchy of events. So you know, something can't happen until until um, you know something is satisfied. So essentially, if you want to project out your work days, you can use this workday function, and essentially you feed it a date, and you say, hey, I want to be 24 days out from that date. Um, you know, in about six weeks, we have a project due. Um, so let's have a review in 24 days before the 25th day. You can also feed this workday function a holiday calculator. And we're going to do it right now. Remember, we, this is going to stay. Um, this is a locked reference. So we want all the dollar signs to correspond with the rows and columns. 
And now what we're doing is we're projecting 24 days out from that date. Similar to the case before, what if we have different weekends? Um, how can we how can we work around that? So this workday international returns, um, you know, a specified date plus or minus what you want to indicate with custom weekend parameters. So essentially, like I said, plus or minus. So we're going to go plus, you know, 55 days from this start date. The weekend configuration, we'll do a Monday, Tuesday weekend configuration because it's a little funky um, and we can show you, you know, it's a little more versatile. And now we can also feed this this function a holiday calendar. And like I said, you don't need to um, if it's square bracketed, but we're going to just for, um, just to, you know, kind of show off what we can do in Excel. Um, so, you know, you pick a start date, you're projecting ahead 55 days. You say our weekends are Mondays and Tuesdays, and we also have these holidays, so don't count those in your projections. Beautiful. And they are going to be um, very, <laughs> very progressive or naturally in um, linear, um, just due to the fact that we set up our start dates this way. So how about if we want to project forward but not with days? Um, that's where we have edate. What edate does is it indicates a date um, certain months projected out. So hey, our first start date is going to be this A column. We want to project out six months, um, a half a year. So bring this down. What eDate did was from the day, 1-7, it projected out six months. Now it's 7-7. Seven, seven. A lot of times though, reporting important dates typically happen at the end of the month. So how can we indicate, you know, let's project six months out, but let's get the end date of the month. And that's where EO month comes in. So it returns a serial number of the last day of the month before or after. Um, so essentially we're gonna hit start date, very similar to e-date. We're gonna say, hey, here's our start date and project out six months. So this is the same exact function, or same exact parameters, you know, project six months out from this, but we're gonna get some different answers. That's because it's projecting out to the last day of the month. For example, if this was three, is projecting out six months forward and bringing us to the last day. And as you can see, these are all formulas still. So when I when I change this date, all these will change. Now, one last trick um, that doesn't have to do with dates that I want to show you is copying as values. We have done this um, before. I've shown you in examples. Um, then you saw how all those dates changed. What if we know these are fixed? What if this is something we're going to submit to our boss because it's a, you know, finalized project, um, finalized project proposal. What you do is you right click on your data or what you do is you select the columns of your data. Make sure you have this four little arrows, hold the right click, bring your data around and bring it back to where it originally was. You can bring it anywhere you want, but we'll bring it back. And then when we release that right click, we'll have the option to copy here as, <laughs> as values only. As you can see, now these are values. I will change this date and nothing changes. Um, that is huge. Um, that, that is very helpful if you want to optimize a spreadsheet. So if you had, you know, if you had these calculations going down for thousands of days um, and you had a lot more calculations, it would start getting a little slow and bulky. Um, so that's, you know, that's a common pain point and sometimes it's very useful to copy as values um, I will say make sure you maintain your original formulas though if you ever want to um, update change or um, revisit so as I showed you everyone you know we went over the elements of a date how to extract certain elements from a date how to work with quarters um, you know messing around with a little bit of VLOOKUPs and some ifs um, and some real applications we did some differences in dates and um, in the 28 functions we also used the date diff function um, and we also projected with dates. Thank you guys for following. We're going to go over some very fun, a little more colorful, conditional formatting next. Take care.